Today, we're going to continue talking about ratios. Remember, ratios are simply two quantities being compared. And so these are ratios. These are quantities being compared. Four compared to one, or five compared to seven, or three compared to eight, or nine compared to three. These are all ratios. But have you wondered yet what these are actually comparing? Yes, eight to two, but eight what? And two what? Six to seven. Six what compared to seven what? Well, I have a question for you. Is this a ratio? There are five dogs for every three cats. No, it's not. Wait, what? Yes, this isn't a ratio, but it does represent a ratio. So then, what ratio does it represent? Well, there are five dogs for every three cats. The ratio being represented is five to three. We now know that it's five what? Oh, five dogs to what? Every three cats. Notice that I said that the ratio is five to three, not that the ratio is there are five dogs for every three cats. Notice that ratios in themselves don't tell us what they are comparing, but when we use words, we can explain the relationship that's being compared. And so, because this isn't a ratio, but it describes the relationship of a ratio, we call it a ratio relationship. Ratio, ratio relationship, ratio, ratio relationship. Notice that a ratio by itself does not have any words describing what its quantities are. In this way, it's good to think of a ratio by itself like a scale comparing two quantities. Whereas a ratio relationship uses words to tell us what is being compared, and in this way, and in this way, a ratio relationship is like a book using words to tell us and describe what is being compared. So one last time, ratio, ratio relationship. Take a look at these ratio relationships. Is there any words inside of these phrases that stand out to you? How about for every and for each or two? These phrases are often found in ratio relationships, and they indicate that ratios are there. I want you to take a moment now and come up with two ratio relationships on your own that use two of these three phrases. I came up with one. For every six of my sharpened pencils, there are four that are dull. Notice I used for every in my ratio relationship. Okay. Well, there's a company that's creating T-shirts. And it decides to give out a survey to some girls to find out their favorite colors of T-shirts. And when the survey is done, they collect all the data and find that one girl prefers red shirts best, four girls prefer blue T-shirts best, two prefer green, seven prefer white, five girls like pink best, three girls prefer orange, and finally four girls like yellow T-shirts best. Wow! Can you remember all that data? <sighs> I can't. Let's put it down in one place so we can look at it. Okay, so here is all of our data. On the left, we have the color of the T-shirts, and on the right, how many girls picked that color as their favorite for T-shirts? Using the ratio three to five, can you come up with a ratio relationship from this data that uses three to five? How about the number of girls who answered orange to the number of girls who answered pink? Can you come up with a ratio relationship for the ratio seven to four? You could have said that the number of girls who answered white to the number of girls who answered blue has a ratio of seven to four. And lastly, what about this ratio, four to three? One possible ratio relationship could be they should make four yellow T-shirts for every three orange T-shirts. Now let's attempt to do the opposite and pull a ratio out of a ratio relationship. So here's a ratio relationship: for each red T-shirt they manufacture, they should manufacture. Four blue T-shirts. What ratio is being represented here? Well, I'll give you a hint. It's one of these two. But which one is it? For each red T-shirt they manufacture, they should manufacture four blue T-shirts. Hmm. Is that one to four or four to one? The order of a pair of numbers in a ratio is very important. In this case, it must be one to four. The reason it must be one to four is because remember we were being asked for red T-shirts to blue T-shirts, and because the red T-shirts are one girl preferring it and the blue has four girls preferring it, it must be one to four. 
So once more, the order matters. If we would have had four to one, we would have been saying that there were four red t-shirts to one blue, but that wasn't the case. So the order of the numbers in a ratio matters. What if you were asked to find the ratio of the number of girls who liked a white t-shirt best to the number of girls who liked any other color t-shirt best? First, realize what's being compared, white t-shirts to every other color. So first, how many girls liked white t-shirts best? Seven. Seven girls liked white t-shirts to, well, how many girls liked other colors? In order for us to find out the total number of every other color, we have to put them together, and to do that, we add. After adding up all the other colors except for white, we find out that 19 girls prefer some color other than white for their t-shirt. The ratio, then, of white to basically non-white t-shirts is 7 to 19. Finally, what about this ratio relationship? 3 out of every 26 t-shirts should be orange. That ratio would look like this, 3 to 26. 3 out of every 26 t-shirts should be orange. So what more do we know about ratios now? Well, we remember that ratios are comparing two different quantities, and that like a scale, we have numbers of quantities on both sides, which looks something like this. 4 to 5 is a ratio. It's two quantities being compared. But on the other hand, we have something called a ratio relationship, which uses words to describe what those quantities are. So the ratio 4 to 1 can be described as Jill has 4 friends to every 1 card she owns. There's a relationship here, and it's a ratio that's being described using words. Thus, it's a ratio relationship. And so, one last time to help you remember, ratio, ratio relationship. Another thing we learned today is that the order of the numbers in a ratio matters immensely. Real life scenarios can often help us make sense of things like this. For instance, would you prefer a friend that gives one piece of candy to every three friends, or a friend who gives three pieces of candy to every one friend? The order of the numbers in a ratio matters. And lastly, we saw that we can easily take a ratio out of a ratio relationship, and we also learned how to take a ratio by itself and, using words, describe the relationship of the quantities being compared in the ratio, ending up with a ratio relationship.